mention that today's webinar is part of our ongoing Shohet Learning Series educational series, where every month we focus on a different topic from our broad range of specialties. Our goal is to educate, inform, and answer questions that you may have during this live interactive session with members of our medical and audiology team. If you'd like to watch any of our previous sessions, you can download them from our website by going to www.eardoctor.org slash events. And the address is also um, at the bottom of the next slide. Um, just a few housekeeping items before we begin. During the session, your audio and video will be turned off uh, so that everyone can easily hear the speaker. We'd also like to encourage you to use the Q&A button uh, or the chat function to submit your questions at any point during the presentation. Our speaker will be happy to answer all of your questions at the end of the presentation. We've also enabled live captioning for this presentation. So if your Zoom account has this feature turned on and you're not seeing the live transcript on your screen, simply click on the live transcript button on your toolbar along the bottom and then select enable auto transcription and you should see the transcription appear on the bottom of your screen. Um, I think that covers all the housekeeping items. So let's go ahead and get started. Today, we have a very special presentation by Dr. Emma Movic of our esteemed audiology team. We'll be detailing some of the latest hearing aid advancements to hit the market. Emma joined Showhead Ear Associates after earning her Doctor of Audiology degree from Arizona State University. She attended the University of Colorado at Boulder for her undergraduate studies, where she earned a bachelor's degree in speech and hearing sciences with a minor in linguistics. Emma has extensive experience counseling patients on hearing loss, communication strategies that can help, and communication strategies that can help them live a more full life. She performed her clinical externship with Showhead Ear Associates, working closely with the medical and audiology team to learn the intricacies of the latest hearing technologies. Emma enjoys many aspects of audiology, including implementing the latest research and technology, as well as using her interpersonal skills to connect with her patients. Her goal each day is to listen and adapt to the needs of the individuals she treats in order to offer a high level of patient-centered care. And without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Movic. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for that introduction. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, again, my name is Dr. Emma Movic. Um, I've been with Showhead for about two years now, and I'm really excited to be here and to give this presentation. So let's go ahead and hop into the PowerPoint. So we're going to be talking about newer hearing aid technology. Basically, I just want to give you guys all of the updates on what the manufacturers are doing to see if you're interested in what they're coming out with or um, just giving you more information. So let's kind of go through the overview of what I'll be talking about today. Um, so first I'll be discussing why new technology is important and then I'll be reviewing the different features in today's hearing aids. So the features that have improved that I want to focus on include sound quality, the noise reduction, rechargeable options, how they connect to your phones via Bluetooth, and the different apps that you can get to make adjustments to the hearing aids. I also want to discuss how to ensure your hearing aids are fit properly, and then we'll be going over what the next step is. So you might be asking, why do I need new hearing aid technology? Um, and so the answer to this is that technology is always advancing. It's one of the great things about this time is that every company is working as hard as they can to get the newest and greatest thing out, which means that you get to benefit from features as they go on. So what hearing aids have been improving throughout the years is how they work in background noise. So when we get into those restaurant and group environments, the hearing aids are trying to focus on how to work best in those environments, as well as reducing audible feedback, kind of the whistling that can occur with hearing aids. They have been working to reduce the presence of that. 
as well as creating both a user-friendly hearing aid, so something that you feel comfortable using, as well as something that you can personalize yourself. And the hearing aids have been adding features to benefit you and improve the quality of life. So another way to put it is let's take the phone, for example. So we started with a landline phone and then we moved on to the oh so fabulous flip phone all the way to today's smartphone. So all three of these phones perform the same basic task to talk to others while on the phone. Although through the years, there have been improvements in the phone with both the sound quality, giving you better reception for talking with others, mobility, first from going from the cordless to mobile phones. And then the phones have different capabilities over time, cameras and apps. And so these are all nice features to have, really beneficial. But to think about it, they all perform the phone calls. It's just that as we go on, there's better advancements. So let's transfer that information over to hearing aids. So we started with the fabulous ear horn. And then through time, we moved to body worn hearing aids. All the way to today's hearing aids, the more discreet in the ear ones. And so what has changed throughout time? Well, again, kind of like the phone, they all aim to provide the same task, to give back audibility amplification. Throughout time though, there's been advancements in how well the hearing aids can reach audibility, meaning that we can now fit a wider range of hearing loss to benefit everyone, as well as the hearing aids are working to process sound better when we get into those noisy background noise environments. There's improvement in the sound quality, giving more clarity and of course, more features. And so this is what we're gonna be talking about today. So let's get into uh, the belly of the beast. We're gonna talk about all the technology updates. First one that I want to talk about is sound quality. This is because we wanna give our patients the most natural and clear quality possible. So how do the hearing aids do this? Um, the hearing aids are working to pick up sounds and process them as quickly as possible, meaning from the time it enters the hearing aid to your ear, we want that to be the shortest amount of time possible so that there's no lag in the speech. It's giving you the best quality. The hearing aids are also scanning environments to better adjust to your specific needs. And then lastly, the hearing aids are programmed by a finer section of pitches. What I mean by that, can I imagine if I had a range of pitches from low to high, it used to be pretty big ranges in which I could adjust based off of that. Now it's gotten more fine so that I have even smaller control of the hearing aids, which in result gives you the best sound quality possible. So I'm gonna use another photo to kind of give this idea some more information. So we'll take a look at this picture. So without the fine details, it's pretty difficult to tell what's going on. As I start to add more details to it, we start to get more of the picture. So here we can tell all right, there's a windmill, it looks like a scene, but we're still not getting all the crisp details. And as I continue to go, we see that the picture becomes more detailed. We're now getting the brush strokes and the painting, more information from the flowers in the front of the photo. Hearing aids are trying to do exactly this. They used to be more pixelated, and we're getting finer and finer details so that you can really understand different things in your environment. Okay, 
So the next one that is a big one I want to talk about is noise reduction. This is because everyone has difficulties in noisy situations. And then we add hearing loss on top of that and it becomes even more difficult. So how are hearing aids tackling the noisy environments? In basic terms, the main goal that they're trying to resolve is to reduce the noise in your environments while keeping the speech that you're interested in comfortable and clear. Of course, this is easier said than done. So let's talk about how hearing aids used to tackle noise. So this photo shows a gentleman at a large table and we're kind of seeing this light on one other person. So hearing aids have microphones in them and those microphones can be programmed to zoom in on a specific direction. So what the hearing aids used to do is when it detected it was in a noisy environment, it would take the microphones and really focus on just the things directly in front of them, meaning that anything in the peripheral and behind them was reduced. So the reason they did this is because there was no other way to tackle all of that noise. It was just giving more emphasis to the person in front of you. It seems like a great idea in theory. The difficulty with this is you're not getting the information from things all around you, meaning that there's a lot of important things that can happen. You're typically at a table with more than one person. And so it really makes it even more difficult to keep up and know what's going on. Okay, so how are they tackling noise now? What they're doing is actually obtaining information from all around you and then determining what's noise to reduce that and giving you that information of speech around while emphasizing what you're wanting to listen to. So how is this done? Well, there's computer chips in the hearing aid that are analyzing the environments that you're in to determine what is noise and what is speech and giving more emphasis to that. It wants to make sure that you do have the audibility from all around you because there's, again, important things in the environment that you wanna be able to listen to. You don't want to miss out on information. So the next question may be how the heck does this computer chip know what is speech and what is noise? So I'm gonna get a little technical here. This right here is called a spectrogram. So on the left side from bottom to top, we have pitch going from very low bass sounds to those higher pitch treble sounds. And then from left to right, we have time. So what we can see is that there's a section called speech, breath, and then speech. The areas that are darker, so the reds, the orange, and the yellow, that's showing more intensity, more um, energy in that area. And so we're seeing these little lines form and that's what we can determine is speech. While the blue green areas are more quiet. So basically the hearing aid is looking for that speech information, the areas where there's a lot of energy, a lot more of that red and orange, and that's what it's determining is speech. Okay, so this seems like it would be pretty easy then to resolve, but the difficulty is when we're in those difficult environments, such as a restaurant and group environments, the other noise tends to be speech as well. So now the hearing aid's trying to determine what speech you want to listen to and what speech we would consider noise. So there's, there's a program called Deep Neural Network. And so it's a noise reduction feature in one of the hearing aids. And the main goal of it is to help the hearing aids work like your brain. So to give you all the information possible and then make adjustments based off of what is important. The benefit of 
deep neural network is that it will provide better speech understanding with less effort for you. So there's three steps to how this deep neural network works. So the first part is that the hearing aids are scanning the environment you're in at a crazy amount of speed. It's scanning your environment 500 times per second to really determine in each environment what is speech, what is noise, giving all of that analysis to your environment. And then takes all of those scans and it does something called spatial clarity processing. So what it's doing is it's then taking all of that information, determining where in the environment the sound was coming from and giving distinction between them. So instead of meshing all the sounds together, it's helping to give us that distinction between different sounds, someone talking on one side and someone on the other side. The last part is called neural clarity processing. And so that's where what they would say the magic happens in the hearing aid. And so it's processing all of the information that it's gathered and where it is in the environment to help reduce the noise and give you more sound information for speech. So the main goal of this, the deep neural network, is to make the full environment audible, but give you contrast and balance to sounds. So we want you to be able to hear everything around you, but still give that focus to speech. And it provides the brain with access to all the important information and it will provide speech audibility, which will in turn provide speech understanding, which will give you less effort in those situations to hear. Okay, so I'm going to get technical with another spectrogram um, just to reorient you to what it is. From left to right, we have a time, and then from bottom to top, we have pitch going from, again, those low bass sounds to those higher pitch treble sounds. So on the right side, we see what's called clean speech, basically speech in a quiet environment. And so in this one, the black indicates no sound, while the brighter the color, it shows more energy. So in this one for the speech, those yellow, orange, red portions are going to be the parts with the most energy. And so we're seeing these clean sections of where speech is occurring. In that situation, again, it's really easy for the hearing aid to determine what is speech and what needs to be amplified. On the left side, we have noisy speech. So again, we're kind of seeing those sections with speech but we're now not seeing quite as much black, which would be the no sound. That black portion is now filled with more sound, which we would consider to be noise. So it's kind of covering up the speech, making it a little bit more difficult to pull out exactly what wants to be heard. So I'm gonna pull up another one. So this one right here is showing how a traditional hearing aid works in that noisy environment. So we can see that the hearing aid did give more of that black area, which again means that it's quieting down the environment, reducing that noise. But we're still seeing these kind of gray areas with that purple where there's still that noise. So even though there's improvement, it's still going to be difficult in that environment because we're still having that noise. So if I pull up this one, this is with that deep neural network, what I was talking about before on. So comparing that one to a conventional, we're seeing that there's more black area in it, as well as just more emphasis on those speech sections. So again, what the hearing aid is doing with the deep neural network is trying to reduce 
presence of that background noise, trying to make it less noticeable, so that you have more emphasis on the speech that you're trying to listen to. Okay, I have one more graph and then I, I won't be quite as technical. So this graph is showing the amount of effort when listening. So how they measure the amount of effort is by looking at your pupil dilation. So when the pupil is larger, it's showing that there's more effort needed in a certain situation to listen and understand what someone is saying. While as the pupil size gets smaller, so towards the bottom of the graph, that's showing that there's less effort. So you're not working as hard in an environment to hear and understand what someone is saying. So what we can see is that there's two lines in the graph. So again, we have pupil dilation from very large pupils up top to smaller pupils down below, less effort. And then we have a time frame from left to right. The blue line represents without this noise reduction feature on, without the hearing aid really working in that environment, the amount of effort needed to listen to a conversation. While if we turn on these features, that pink line represents how well the patient was able to understand and how much effort they needed. So we're seeing that with this noise reduction feature on, with all of these new features, there's less effort on the patient themselves to hear in a situation, meaning that you're not going to get that listener fatigue, you're not going to be exhausted after being in an environment. Okay, so the next feature that I want to point out is that hearing aids have now become rechargeable. Um, so this is a feature where you no longer have to worry about the zinc air batteries, the disposable batteries that you have to change about every week or two. So let's get into it. So each manufacturer has their own rechargeable hearing aid. So these hearing aids have a lithium ion battery, meaning that it works like a phone battery. It's gonna last a long time. It's really reliable. Um, so I do want to note that while each manufacturer has a rechargeable hearing aid, not every hearing aid is rechargeable. And it's all based off of your hearing loss and the needs. So let's get into some technical terms for charging. So how long does it take to charge the hearing aids? And this is kind of the estimate throughout all the manufacturers around two to four hours. So um, when you put them in the charger at night, it's guaranteed to be completely charged by the morning. But how long does one charge last? Again, it's gonna vary from manufacturer to manufacturer, but they all guarantee a full day. So around 16 to 29 hours. And so what that charging, how that varies is based off of your phone usage as well as hearing loss. And what if you forgot to charge? Well, no worries. 30 minutes will give you an average of four to six hours of battery life back. So say we forgot to charge them one night, if you put them in the charger for 30 minutes, you're guaranteed to get a few more hours use out of them. Another feature that manufacturers have is a portable charging unit, meaning that you can charge the hearing aids when you have no access to an outlet or electricity. So get, this gives you a few additional charges so you don't have to worry if you're on a camping trip or if there's a blackout, there's rechargeable, portable rechargeable option. And so again, it's great for on the go, camping, when you're not by an outlet, anything of that kind. So another rechargeable option is 
there's a waterproof hearing aid that Phonak makes. So the hearing aid can withstand submersion of up to 50 centimeters or 1.64 feet. And it can be waterproof for all fresh water, salt water, and pool water. So if you're someone that maybe has a history of getting water on their hearing aids, or you're just super concerned about it, this is a great option because it's both rechargeable and you have that extra security of the hearing aid being waterproof. Starkey makes a custom in the ear device that is a rechargeable option. So most hearing aid manufacturers, their rechargeable option is a hearing aid with a piece that goes behind the ear. This one is actually a custom piece that's so all just in the ear and then you can set it on the charger. And so it's great for someone with poor dexterity where they need just one easy piece to put in their ear or for visually impaired because you're no longer dealing with the batteries and it's just one piece that goes in the ear, it's custom made for your ear. So it's a simple to use design. So next, let's talk about Bluetooth. So select hearing aids can connect directly to your iPhone, iPad, or newer Android devices. So what this means is that you can treat your hearing aids like a pair of Bluetooth headsets meaning you can listen to phone calls and audio directly from your phone into your hearing aids. So audio can include anything from music to podcasts, audiobooks, anything on your phone where you have sound coming out of it, it can now be streamed directly into the hearing aids. Also select hearing aids and phones can have the option to be hands-free during phone calls. So traditionally, you have to have your phone nearby so that the speaker on the other side can hear what you're saying. But some hearing aids now have the option to where you can just talk and the hearing aids pick up the volume. Another Bluetooth feature is that there are custom hearing aids with Bluetooth. So again, a custom piece that's made directly for your ear specifically. And then it can also connect to your phone and act as a Bluetooth headset. This does come with a disclaimer that it's only available in select sizes and it's heavily dependent on your ear anatomy. So if you have smaller ears, the device has to be a bit bigger to fit the Bluetooth technology in it. Phonak also has a tap control. So what you can do is treat tapping as a control on the hearing aids. So when you're answering a phone call, you can tap the hearing aid. Same with ending the phone call, you can just tap the hearing aid. It also works for when you're playing and pausing music, just quick taps will control that music feature as well as with voice control. So if you're using Siri or whatever the alternative is for Android, you can do that to activate your voice control. So next we can talk about different apps that are available. So each manufacturer has some sort of app that you can connect the hearing aids to when they're connected to the phone. What the apps do is you can adjust the volume of the hearing aids through it. You can put different settings in. As well as they all have different features for how to help um, personalize the devices more for yourself. I'm gonna go into a few of the different manufacturers and what their apps can do. So Starkey has an app called the Thrive app. And so this app, it's really meant for safety and quality of life, keeping you healthy and to alert others when you fall and just to help you live better. So what's available in the app 
is that the hearing aids can have a fall alert. And so it can detect when you have fallen and can alert your specified contacts of this. And then it also has activity tracking. So it can track the amount of steps that you have, um, the minutes of walking at a brisk pace or faster for exercise, and the amount of continuous movement for standing. And so it can give you a score depending on all of those activities. It also has engagement tracking, which means that it's going to know the amount of time that you wear the hearing aids. It's gonna mark the amount of time that you spend listening in complex environments. So environments where there's multiple people talking, group situation, environments such as that. And it's also going to keep track of how many different environments you're in. So if you go between a restaurant and a group environment to a quiet home, it's going to keep track of all of those different environments. Lastly, what the app can do is it can set audible reminders. So if you have to take medication at a certain time or have an issue of remembering when appointments were, what the app can do is it can actually send you audible reminders in your hearing aids for those things. So Oticon has come out with a remote care app. And so this came out with COVID because as we all know, COVID has decreased the amount of time out that we would go. And so if you were someone that is at high risk or not comfortable being seen in person, there's a possibility to make adjustments, to set the hearing aids through an app so that we can still care and manage for you, but at a safe distance. And so if you are interested in this, if this is something that really strikes you, I would talk further with your audiologist about it. So next we have Widex and they have an app called Moment. And so within the app, there's a few different features that I want to point out. So one is that you can change the directionality of your hearing aid microphones for different situations. Meaning, say you are in a car and you're in the passenger seat and you're really trying to listen to what someone's saying to the left of you, you can actually go into the app and choose which way the hearing aids give the most focus to. Or if you've got kiddos behind you that you're trying to listen to, you can put it to the back. And then you don't have eyeballs in the back of your head, but you at least have hearing aids in the back of your head. Um, and so it can give you a better sound signal in those environments. The other thing that the Widex app includes um, is this artificial intelligence technology. So hearing aids have settings in them that we can program so that when you get into a restaurant, the hearing aid knows how to adjust for that. The difficulty is we, when we make the programs, we don't know exactly what's happening in that specific restaurant. And so different features could be needed to give better benefit. So what the app does, is that it will teach your hearing aids how you want to hear. And so the more you use it, the more the hearing aid is going to get used to how you work and how you prefer to hear. And I'm gonna hop over to the next screen to just enlarge this photo. So what it means, let's say we were in a dining situation and we're having a lot of difficulty hearing those around us. You can open up the app and you can select your activity. So in this example, they selected dining. And then it says, choose what to optimize for. And you can choose up to two different things to optimize for. So say you really are having difficulty hearing. So we could 
increase the conversation and suppressing disturbances. Based off of what you select here, the hearing aid will then come up with two recommendations that you can try. So you can try both recommendations to see if one is more beneficial in that specific situation. And then you can save that. And the benefit of this is that the more you do this in your environments, the hearing aid's going to learn based off of it and make adjustments and settings based off of what you prefer. So it's pretty high tech. Okay. So next I will talk about the Phonak app. So Phonak also has an app called My Phonak. And in it, you can create your own settings in different environments. So you have a lot of control through the app to adjust the frequencies of the sounds, meaning you can add more bass, decrease the treble, make adjustments so that the sound is of better quality to you. Then you also have a noise reduction and a speech focus slider, meaning that you can adjust those in different situations to see what is more beneficial for you. So there's a lot of room for you to have your own adjustability in the hearing aids to give you the best preferences possible. Another app feature, which we have found to be great with the addition of COVID is the Find My Hearing Aids. So with Find My Hearing Aids, as long as the hearing aids are connected to the phone and we enable location services, say we realize later on after running errands that one of our hearing aids is missing. You can pull open the app and it will give you information of the last time the hearing aid was connected to the phone where that was. So it's gonna give you better help in finding the hearing aid and when you get into a certain range, one of the apps can even tell you if you're close to it or if you're further away from it. I think this is a really important thing to bring up because with the addition of masks, we have had patients lose more hearing aids because we fling off the mask and the hearing aid can go flying with it. So this is an added benefit just to give us more of a helping hand in that situation. Okay, so finished with all the features, I do want to discuss the importance of something called real ear measures. And this is something that every audiologist at our practice does. So hearing aids need to be fine-tuned based off of your specific hearing loss and your specific ear anatomy. Every hearing aid has a general first fit setting, meaning that based off of your hearing loss, the hearing aid is going to set the hearing volume at an, what they think is going to be appropriate. This would be all great and dandy if every single patient had the same exact ear size and ear shape but our ears are quite different, not only from one another, but from right to left, they can be different too. So this test is super important because it's the only way that we can actually verify that the hearing aids are fit based off of prescription. So what we do is we put the hearing aids in your ear with a little microphone. What the microphone does in your ear is measure what the hearing aids are actually doing in there. And then we get a visual of where the hearing aid is set. And then we have prescription that we need to match the hearing aid to. So this is an active process that we go in and we're making adjustments to ensure we're giving you the best audibility possible. And so again, this is something so important because without it, we don't know where the hearing aid is set. And there can be crazy things that our ears can do to alter the results. So different sizes and shapes can over amplify certain pitches or give too little volume 
at certain pitches. So this test is how we determine that at every single pitch, we're giving you the right amount of volume. And the reason this is important is because even if you have the best technology, um, it's gonna mean nothing without this measure because it's not properly fit for your specific ear. So again, this is something that we do. We really pride ourselves on giving the hearing aids the best benefit possible. And it is considered the gold standard in audiology. It's something that everybody should be doing. Um, lots of places think it takes too long to do, but we really find it important because it includes research back evidence based information. And it's always just a great starting point that way as we make adjustments to your hearing aids based off of what you're noticing in your environments. We're not making these adjustments blindly, but we really have a good visual of what the hearing aid is doing in your ear. Okay, so after this talk, you may be wondering, how do I know when it's time to get new hearing aids? So what I say to this is, if you're having continued difficulties in those different environments, or you want improvement in the sound quality and for speech and for music. Maybe you're just interested in seeing what else is out there or you're interested in features available in new hearing aids. So what I'm basically saying is there's no concrete way to know when it's time to get new hearing aids. But if you're having some of these questions I always find that it's beneficial to come in and talk with one of your audiologists. That way we can further evaluate you and determine what the next step is. So if at the end of this you're thinking, maybe I'm interested in newer technology or just even learning more about it, we do have an event coming up, an open house event. So this is a time and an opportunity for you to come in and discuss as well as demo newer hearing aid technology. And so it will be scheduled with one of our audiologists and we're more than happy to demo the devices on you, further discuss what benefits there are based off of what you want out of a hearing aid. So the event is March 29th through April 1st from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, we have the event in all three locations, just based off of different days. So I would contact our office to reserve your spot. Again, the event will be available at all three locations, just on different days. If you're still interested to find more information, I recommend that you go to our website, www.eardoctor.org and we can give you, it gives you more information on the event. Um, I will say that um, due to interest with the open house, we have been receiving more phone calls. So if you do get voicemail, please leave your name and number and we will get back to you as soon as possible. So thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I will be taking questions. If you also have any questions that come up, feel free to give us an email message at news at eardoctor.org. Okay. Okay, so someone in the chat asked if I am going to get to this, but is there a reason I did not mention Signia's Evolve AI? So um, the Evolve is actually a part of the Starkey line in the artificial intelligence. And there's no reason in particular, I tried to just pick certain manufacturers to put focus on. Um, with that being said, every single manufacturer has been putting in a lot of work into artificial intelligence, really getting the hearing aids to work more like a brain. 
Um, and so kind of what I say for most of the manufacturers, there's going to be something similar for other manufacturers as well. Of course. Okay. Yeah, so our, the question is, does your office sell all the hearing aid companies described today? Um, yes, so we work with a top six manufacturer list. So that includes Oticon, Resound, Phonak, Widex, Signia, and Starkey. I think I got those all. Um, these are considered the top six. They're really what us as audiologists like, they're ethical, and we like how they're processing the sounds. Um, so we work with all top six manufacturers. So if anything stood out to you of importance from today, I would schedule an appointment just to further discuss, and we're more than happy to go into depth with whatever manufacturer you're interested in. And feel free, there is a chat option. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to type them in there. While you're doing so, I'm just going to go to the next slide to kind of further that point that I wanna give a big thank you to our hearing aid reps. Um, I've been contacting and speaking with them to put this presentation together. And so it wouldn't have been as successful without them. And so again, it's all of these manufacturers. Um, so a question came in of uh, which is my primary location. So myself, I work between the Irvine and the Newport location. So I'm in Irvine Mondays and Tuesdays and in Newport Wednesday through Friday. Um, we do have audiologists on staff at all three locations at all times. So you can go to any of the offices and there will be someone there to help you. I can't say enough good things about all of our audiologists. Um, I'm really happy to work alongside all of them and they're all great. Okay, someone else asked what is offered at the open house. So at the open house, um, a few things can occur. One, we'll make sure that we have up-to-date hearing information on you, whether that be through sc screening your hearing to see if there's been any change or just to evaluate you. Um, then we will discuss different hearing aid technology, answer any questions that you may have. Um, and then it also includes a demo of newer devices. So we actually fit the hearing aids to you using the gold standard measures that I talked about. And then we'll walk around, kind of give you an idea of what the hearing aids sound like. So it's just an opportunity for you to come try out the devices before buying them. At the end, if you're interested, we can order devices for you, or if you need to think about it, we have that option as well. Um, someone else asked, have your patients been successful with CROSS systems? So for those of you that don't know, a CROSS, it stands for contralateral routing of signal. And so it's for somebody that has severe or profound hearing loss on one side and it's not a usable ear, what we can do is add a device to that side so that if someone's talking on the side with the poor ear, it sends the signal over to the better sounding ear. Um, so it's beneficial because it gives that information where people would normally lack. Um, and yeah, we have found a lot of success with it. Um, benefits with the cross just means that you have more sound awareness. I know a lot of people may be concerned when walking 
and they have one side that has a lot of hearing loss, this gives them back that comfort and safety. Um, benefits also is that the cross can also be a rechargeable option. Typically it would drain a lot of battery. And so the rechargeable option is something that a lot of people are really liking. Um, another person asked, is it best to have an appointment for the open house? Yes, so the open house is by appointment only. So make sure to give us a call so that we can reserve a spot for you. Um, it's typically a 45 minute appointment. So we wanna make sure that we're giving each and every patient the time and care needed. Um, someone said, I have a problem with my left ear. Do I need hearing aids for both? That's a great question. Um, it's really going to depend on what your hearing test looks like. Um, and so that's gonna be something where I would really recommend coming in just so I can evaluate what's going on and we can come up with a plan. Sometimes one hearing aid is good, but again, it really is going to depend on your hearing test. So I can't give a concrete answer. Um, do you, I know of any legislation out there to try and get insurance companies to cover or help offset the cost? So this is a loaded question because insurance is, I bet everyone can understand, not always fun to work with. Um, what we do is we check your hearing aid benefit before we see you to discuss hearing aids. That way we have more information going into it because some insurances do have some sort of hearing aid benefit that will give a reduction in cost, whether that is something that is available to use at our office, that's kind of where it gets tricky and I'm not exactly sure. In terms of Medicare, Medicare currently doesn't cover the cost of hearing aids. I know there's a lot of talk about legislation changing. Um, this has been kind of ongoing for many years, so I unfortunately have no better information than the next about um, insurance coverage. All right, it looks like um, we may have answered all of your questions um, and that is all we have for you guys today. Um, we're thankful to those of you who have been able to join us. And if you'd like to listen again or share with someone you know, keep an eye on your email inbox. We'll be sending out a recording of today's presentation, including the question and answer session in the next few days. We look forward to connecting with you again next month for the continuation of the series of four talks focusing on optimizing your hearing aid journey. So until next time, stay well. Thank you everyone for tuning in. It was a pleasure um, and I hope to see you all in the office. Mm -hmm.